if we go here and take a look at our program, now you can see this is our basic program, which consists of, oh, and you can see if you hover over these keywords, it actually pops up a little helper text for you to show you the usage for these keywords and these commands, which is really cool. So that should be really helpful for us to learn how to use this Boreal basic programming language. So I'm not really familiar with the Boreal basic programming language yet, but so far this program that I've written here seems to work. And there's a couple other things we can take a look at while we're here. If we take a look at this folder that I created, the My Projects folder, we can see underneath it now, we have this testprogram.bas file, which we saved manually. But also we can see there's a testprogram.bin file, which is a binary file, which is the compiled machine code file, which is really cool. And also we have a testprogram.cfg, which I presume is a config file of some sort. But one interesting thing to note here is that this .bin file or this binary file could actually be loaded and executed in another emulator, for example, such as the ZX Spin emulator that we loaded in a previous video. So why don't we take a look at that and just uh, quickly test that out. So I'm just going to go down and open my ZX Spin environment now. So there I've got the ZX Spin emulator open now. And now what I want to do is load that binary file into this ZX Spin emulator. So I'll go ahead and click File and Load Binary File. And the file name, I'm just going to search for it here. So here I am in the desktop ZX game dev directory. And I'll go to my next build folder here and my other next build folder and then the sources folder. And then underneath that, remember I created a folder called my projects. So I'll open that and there it is my test program. Well, this is the basic file here and here is the binary file test program dot bin. So I'll just click on that and click open. And now I also have to tell it what the starting address is for this machine code program, because remember it's going to load this machine code program into memory but it needs to know where to put it in memory. So some programs are relocatable and some programs are not. And these are machine code programs I'm referring to because depending on how the machine code program is actually written or compiled, then it could possibly be able to be moved to a different location in memory and still execute properly. But some programs can't be moved to a different location. Otherwise they break, they don't work properly. So in this case, let's try and load the program back into memory in the same place that it was compiled originally using our next build environment in the VS Code editor. So let's go back and see if we can figure out where that is. So I'm just going to go back here to the VS Code editor and I'm going to take a look at output that the program printed when it was compiling the program. So if I go down here and I scroll through it, we can see, well, here's a message that says looking for org. So now when it was compiling the program, it was looking for an org statement. And we know that the org statement is the statement that tells the assembler where in memory to store our machine code program. But we didn't put an org statement in our basic program. So if we take a look down here, it says, oh, never found org. So it never found an org statement in our basic program. And the following line here says default org 32768. That means when our basic program was compiled, it was saved in memory as a machine code program beginning at memory address 32768. So let's load it back into the same address 32768. And we'll go back over here to our spin emulator and we'll type in the starting address of 32768. And we'll click load. Okay, so our machine code program should now be loaded into memory into this ZX Spin emulator. And it's loaded beginning at address 32768. So in order to execute that program now, remember how we do that? We use the randomize user command to execute a machine code program. So we'll type in randomize user, which is, well, actually I'll type it over here on my quick basic keyboard here, randomize user. 32768 and I'll press enter. And it seems to be running but very slowly. So I'm not sure why it's running so slowly in our ZX Spin emulator, but 
at least it's running. So it's an interesting exercise for us to try and we can try and figure out why it's running so slowly at a later point. But so at least it's running. Now let's go back over to our VS Code editor again. And now what I want to do is take a look at another cool feature of this development environment, which is the feature I mentioned in part one of this uh, video episode, which is the inline Z80 assembly language that we can use. So in other words, we can actually type Z80 assembly language instructions or commands into our basic program. So we can have assembly language essentially mixed in with our basic commands in our basic program. So let's go ahead and, and try that and see how that works. So I'm going to enter uh, an assembly language program now here right in the middle or well at the end of our basic program. And the way we do that is we type ASM to let the editor know that we're entering Z80 assembly language instructions now. And you see it automatically puts this end ASM instruction at the end of our ASM block. So it uh, knows that we're going to have to end this assembly language uh, block at some point. So it puts that in for us automatically. So now my assembly language program, I'm going to type LD HL comma 40,000. So that will load the value 40,000 into the HL register pair. And if you don't understand how that works, then you might want to go back and watch the uh, previous videos we made about Z80 assembly language and uh, check that out. But it's pretty simple how this program works. And my next line will be LD A comma 2. So that's going to load the value of 2 into the A register. And my next line will be LD brackets HL comma A. So that will transfer the value that's saved in the A register, which is 2, into the memory location pointed at by the HL register pair. So it's going to load the value 2 into memory location 40,000 because 40,000 is the value stored in the HL register pair. And that's it for our um, assembly language program. So what this assembly language code segment is going to do is load the value 2 into memory location 40,000. But now we need some way to verify that that value has actually been stored in memory location 40,000. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add another little basic program at the end of this program. So I'm going to switch back into basic now and type border peak. And we should know what the peak command does, right? 40,000. So now it's going to change the border color to equal the value that's stored in memory location 40,000, which as we know should be a value of 2, because that's what the assembly language code snippet that we entered into our Boreal Basic program is designed to do. So here we have an assembly language segment that is going to load the value of 2 into memory location 40,000. And now at the end of our program, we're going to change the border color to equal whatever value is stored in memory address 40,000, which should be the value of 2, which should equal the color red. So then what we want to do after that is I want to make the program pause and wait long enough for us to actually see this border color before the uh, emulator gets reset, because for some reason it seems to reset the emulator after it finishes running our program. So I'm going to uh, kind of cheat and I'm going to use another beep command here. I'm going to make it beep for 10 seconds at just some random uh, frequency value of 5. So there we have our modified program, which now still contains our original basic segment at the beginning, which is going to cycle through some random border colors. And then we have this cool assembly language segment stuffed in the middle of it as an inline assembly language program. And what that's going to do is load the value of 2 into memory location 40,000. And then we're switching back into basic here at the end. And we're going to change the border color to equal whatever value is stored in memory location 40,000, which should be value 2, which equals the color red. So if all goes well, this program should end up by showing us a red border. So let's go ahead and try it out. So we'll click on terminal. 
run build task or control shift B would do the same thing. And let's see what happens. First, we'll see if it actually compiles our program successfully. And it seems to be uh, doing that properly. And now we'll wait for it to run and see what happens. Now it's running. And it ends with the border color red. So you can see how cool it is. We can now actually enter Z80 assembly language commands into the middle of our basic program, which is unbelievable. But uh, it's letting us do it in this development environment, which is something I find so exciting about this environment. So I think uh, it's definitely worth a shot, in my opinion, to see how this environment is going to work for us in developing uh, some games for the ZX Spectrum Next computer. At least, if nothing else, it's another tool that we have at our disposal that we can use for developing games if we want to. So I think this has been a, a huge success so far. And like I said, hopefully you were able to successfully get this environment set up on your computer successfully as well, because I know there's quite a bit to it and it's a bit tricky and it's not as easy as installing the ZX Spin development environment, for example. But I think once we get it installed and working, it will be pretty cool to try this out and see exactly what it can do for us. So, um, so far I'm pretty impressed with what it can do. And it was, I think, worth the trouble of trying to get it all installed. So I want to thank you again for watching. And again, thanks for following me on this video series. I hope you are enthusiastic about creating some retro video games for the ZX Spectrum Next computer because there's a lot of stuff we still have to learn and a lot of stuff we still need to do. And our next video is going to be pretty cool, I think. So stick around for that one. And remember to click the little notification bell if you want to get notified automatically about that. And again, a final uh, reminder for anyone who might want to help support me on this journey by becoming a Patreon subscriber. Feel free to head over to patreon.com forward slash SpriteWorks and check out the different subscription levels and the rewards that are available to you there. I'm trying to uh, set up some rewards that I think uh, would be pretty cool for people who are willing to uh, donate and become a subscriber. So if you're interested in that, feel free to go check it out. Otherwise, I'm glad to have you along on this journey with me. And again, as usual, we're going to keep going forward and learning what we can learn and see how we can develop some cool games for the ZX Spectrum next. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.